Three, two, one, and we are live. What's up, CP family? Chad here with Tim. Hey. Tiebreaker series number 62. Tim's back from London, England. He was doing some training over there with the LTA, and we are back in action with the tiebreaker series. Um, we're gonna dive into a pretty cool topic today. We got a question in from a parent. This question is, it says, um, it, it, it's kind of about balance. And the question is, how do you balance um, planning for the future and long-term goals, long-term thinking with staying in the moment? How do you balance that as a parent of a competitive tennis player? Yeah, that's a great question. And it's actually one that I really um, struggled with uh, okay. over many, many years when I was younger because staying, uh, having these long-term goals it's really fine and dandy, but sometimes the longer out the goal is, the harder it is to kind of be focused and stay in the moment because you're always worried a little bit about are you on track or aren't you on track and that kind of thing. And that, that creates a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, okay? And so, but really um, the measure of our effectiveness, even as parents or even as players, the measure of the effectiveness is whether or not you can stay in the moment and enjoy that moment. and. Uh, that has to do with us as a parent or that has, us, that, that has to do with whether you're uh, a player competing in a tournament. If their mind is in the past or in the future or us as parents, we're actually, we as parents, we actually, um, we sort of like succeeded in this art of being able to worry about multiple things at one time. And it really is, um, it really destroys our happiness and it destroys our joy. And it, and it really makes us ineffective uh, for what we're really trying to accomplish. But what's really crazy is that when our kids were young, they actually were really good at being in the moment. Like when they were really little, whether they were drawing a picture or, or doing coloring or painting or, or they were um, doing some playing with balloons, they could always just really enjoy the moment. But all of a sudden they get older and Something changed, and think of us as parents. Something changed where all of a sudden we're really uh, focused more on the problems of the past or our concerns of the future, and we just don't all of a sudden enjoy things anymore, and we can't even enjoy our kids for just performing. And that sort of rubs off, because that's our environment. So what happens is that rubs off onto our kids, and pretty soon they're all of a sudden focused on, I gotta win this match, or I have to get my rating or my ranking up. Or if only I can just get to the quarters, okay? Or if I can actually win this tournament, or if I can get to that scholarship, or get to that, you know, get get land uh, a scholarship at that college, and pretty soon their mind's not never in the present. They're not enjoying the present moment, and that really is a problem and creates um, um, just a lot. It's a, it's a lot of it's a lot of problems for creating um, just the moments to to perform your best. Yeah, it's like self induced pressure that you're putting on yourself. So it sounds like. Uh, you know, being in the moment will do wonders for your happiness, but it also will amp up the performance too. Yeah, because um, again, it, you know, your mind isn't really concerned about a future result or maybe say something in the past that you maybe should or shouldn't have done, like lose a, lose a game, you know, whatever, that game you should have won, or even that match you should have won or that set you should have won, and now you're going into a second set or whatever, your third set. It just makes it harder to perform. And so that's really the art of performance is being in the moment. And, and being in the moment is having your mind in the moment, enjoying what you're doing and grasping or um, you know, just, just loving almost everything or every aspect of what you're doing in that moment. And that could be whether you're training in the gym, that could be whether you're practicing on the court, or that's whether you're playing a match in a tournament. Enjoying every aspect of it is really, really crucial. Is there any particular thing you can think of in the past, like growing up, um, raising your kids and stuff, where you probably uh, struggled with this or a particular situation where you were thinking too far ahead and might have needed to enjoy yourself a little bit more in the moment? Well, I really had a hard time enjoying myself in a lot of, in a lot of respects. And one of the things that I did that I shouldn't have done that I look back in retrospect is that I set a goal too far in advance, like too far into the future. And that's why I think is... And so, for example, I, I set a goal that um, I wanted Bethany to turn professional, okay? And if she was going to turn professional, then you start comparing where she is versus not only other players, but players of past generations or 
or, or of 10 years ago and where were they at that age and that kind of thing. And so you start, you start kind of freaking out. And then if she's in a match and she's not doing very well or she doesn't even win the, you know, she doesn't even get to the quarterfinals or whatever, then you're kind of like, oh, something's wrong. And you're not, so you're always trying to say, there's always something that's in the way of getting to that goal and you're wondering if you're on track. And, and when you're always focused in the future of trying to wonder whether you're going to get to that goal or not, you can't enjoy the present. And what happens if you can't enjoy the present, that energy just passes on to whoever's in your environment and that's gonna be your kids. Yeah, so like negatively in, in, impacts performance. Exactly, yeah. yeah, because they, they, catch that, that, they catch that energy and they, they actually start doing the same thing because they just, carry, they just catch what, um, that negative energy that you're, that you're portraying uh, or, or, or that's coming out and they're catching that and, they're, and they know something's not right. And so they start, they start doing the same thing. That I have to win this, I have to win this match, or I have to win this game, or I have to, I, I have to win this tournament, or I have to have to get this scholarship. They start doing that, and when you start thinking about that, you're, you're, you're not. First of all, you're not in control of any of that, and and secondly, it just destroys your peace, and your effectiveness for being in the moment and doing what you have control over to actually get to your goal. Do you find a lot of the players or the families that you're kind of working with now struggle with this? And what, what's some of the stuff, what are some of the situations they struggle with and what are some of the solutions that you give them? Yeah, I think that where a lot of parents are struggling is, is that they don't know if they're really on track, you know? And there might be some days that they think they are. Um, they're usually looking for somebody else's compliment or somebody else's affirming the situation. And then they can kind of go, okay, I must be on track. And they really don't know. And that's what we try to do here at CP is we really empower the parents with education, with knowledge. And that's why we put out the content we do in, in, the, in the Facebook groups that we have, giving those parents a little bit more information on where they are in the process and that the process is going to take care of itself and they're on track and it's nothing's an emergency and they don't have to all of a sudden, if something doesn't go right, they, they don't have to immediately go that something's wrong, that I'm not going to reach my goal. And they just kind of like freak out. And I think that's a, a lot of times it's because, first of all, they don't know where they are in the process. They can't measure the end of the goal to where they are now and then the steps that are necessary to get to that goal. And that's where we help them by giving them a plan to follow and then, of course, the advice that we give along, along the way as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I know a big thing that we talk about here a lot at CP is just being more process-oriented right out the gate. Right, it's that common kind of discussion, process versus product. Mm -hmm. And we want our athletes and our families here to embrace the process just as much as the outcome, yeah. right? Because it's the process is gonna create, create the athlete, grow as a person, that's what you should be focused on. That's the beauty of everything. You don't need to be finally getting to a destination and then it's like over, because it's never over. Like I know looking back as an athlete training, um, maybe I was working out really, really hard to get a high level athletic goal, but it really prepared me for life. And that's what we're doing here at CP. Mm -hmm. We're preparing our athletes for life after their sport. So then what, what does it matter that you're trying to get, go to this school or that school when the skills, the intangibles that you're gaining in your tennis is going to equip you for life. And I can lean back on certain athletic training in my past that has prepared me to handle life better. And so if you think of it with that perspective, I think that takes some pressure off the outcome to begin with and you get more focused on the process. Yeah, that's a great point. And also for the parents, uh, they don't have to so uh, panic. Um, once they understand a little bit more of the process, I think sometimes they feel they can't get off the treadmill. Like they, like they can't take a day off or they can't take a, they gotta get to this next tournament. And, they, and somehow this, um, this, this, this junior environment, you know, this traditional junior development environment puts that pressure like you gotta you gotta keep going you gotta you, you can't you can't back off and so they're almost like 24 7 out of balance focusing so heavy on that goal and always thinking that they're never attaining it and or that they're going to be happy when they finally obtain it but they've been miserable along the whole way and that just permeates to everybody around them and you know it's okay it's not that important one day or one week or one tournament, it's just not that important. What's important is that they're following a plan and the plan is getting them towards their goal and they keep improving. 
And like you said, along the way, they become a person. They become a certain person that is able to withstand challenges or look at challenges as opportunity. We talk a lot about that when we really talk one-on-one -on -one with our athletes about getting into that solution room instead of that problem room and treating obstacles as opportunities. And that just changes the mindset. So it takes the pressure off and allows them to be in the moment because that's, only, that's the only time they have right now that they actually can control. Absolutely. And, and another kind of benefit of really diving into a plan and, and really honing in on the process is you're less susceptible to these outside forces that don't really matter or the comparison of other players or where you should be at right now because everyone's path is a little bit differently. So a yeah. lot of that can just be negative when you're comparing yourself like, oh, this athlete is at this level, my athlete should be at that level. But if you're just focused on the process, you can just go tunnel in on that and trust it. Yeah, and, and having trust in a plan, it just does wonders for um, motivation levels and, and uh, faith and hope and, you know, and that, that the athlete's gonna reach those goals. And it actually uh, promotes a lot of peace in the process, you know, in those environments uh, when they have a, actually have a proven plan that they can follow. And one thing I just wanna say to parents is that um, your kids have time, you know, your, your kids have time to develop. And, and in fact, it's all about development. And that's the number one goal is to develop them in the process to become something so that they can have a life skill to draw on when they face these circumstances or these obstacles when they actually get out in life. And, and that's just a wonderful thing. And, they, and just sit back for a moment and know that in general, if they're competing at these higher levels in, in competitions, in this junior development process is that they're learning those life skills and that should just make you feel really good. Um, they could be doing a lot of other things and take a look at your kids and start being a little bit more proud of them just for what they're doing and the fact that they're going after something that they're really putting out and make feel good about that. Even when you're watching them compete, that's one of the really cool ways that you can re uh, release some pressure of these moments is to start appreciating them and being really grateful for them for the hard work that they're doing and the effort they're putting out, regardless of what the result's gonna be. Absolutely, I think we'll end on that. For everyone new, I know we got a couple people coming in new on CP Elite. These tiebreaker series are something we do every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, we base the show off of questions that you give us. So if you have any questions, any topics you want us to cover, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. Uh, we talk about this stuff all day anyway, so we we much rather just talk about exactly what you want us to talk about. So let us know, and we'll see you same time, same place next Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern. See you. Peace. See you later, Love you guys. Love you guys.